you all and welcome. We are Mercy Rains from Oman and thank you for joining us for this session of praise and worship. Before we start, I request each one of you to close your eyes, take a deep breath and make yourselves feel relaxed and comfortable as we enter into the presence of our Lord. Let us sign ourselves by the sign of the Holy Cross, O Lord, deliver me from all that is evil. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, we thank you and praise you for you are an amazing and a mighty God. For you are our rock, our refuge, our shield, and our shelter. You are our guide and our strength. For it is by your love and grace that you brought us together as one family, united as we pray. Brothers and sisters, let us sing this hymn, Endless Praise, as we pour out our praises to our God, for he deserves all the glory and honor. Oh, you are God, and we lift you up. We'll keep singing, we'll keep praising, we won't stop giving all we got. Cause you're worthy of all glory. Oh, there is no other, you are forever. Lord of a road, there's nobody like you, no one beside you. Every 
can go on praising your name for the countless blessings you have bestowed upon us. By your stripes and wounds are we healed, and it is by your precious blood that we are protected from the evil. As we sing the next hymn, Tell the World, let us proclaim God's word that he fulfilled through his son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, was resurrected from the dead and lives within us. and spark the fire of life within us, for we are here. As we sing the next hymn, Here I Am, Send Me, let us welcome the Father, Son and Holy Spirit in our hearts and believe that every knee shall bow, every tongue confess and every heart shall cry out for the glory of our Lord.
me to the nations, send me to my neighbors. surrender to him all that is not from him. It could be the troubles and the worries from our surroundings. It could be the uncertainties of the future and much more that is taking away our focus from our one true Savior. Lord, it is you whom we need in every hour, in every step that we take and in every second of breath that we breathe. Dear brothers and sisters, let us discern for a clean and contrite heart and ask for the Lord's mercy and forgiveness as we sing this hymn, Lord, I Need You. Thank you. 
Welcome to the second day. Today we are going to look at a very important topic that is the repentant intercessor. What is intercession? Intercession is partaking in God's work of salvation. So for this the intercessor draws near to God. Someone said, speaking about intercession, it is life that prays. So the life of an intercessor, the relationship of an intercessor with God and with people is very, very important. We see in the life of Abraham, Genesis chapter 18 verse 23 As he was going to intercede for Sodom and Gomorrah We find the scripture clearly narrating this Abraham drew nearer to God Hallelujah Now about Moses In the book of Exodus chapter 3 Verse 1 to 5 says on Mount Horeb, Moses, as he was approaching the burning bush, the Lord spoke to him and said, Come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place in which you are standing is a holy ground. Amen. So an intercessor stands on a holy ground. So personal holiness is an essential qualification for an intercessor. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 15 says, When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. So very, very important for us. Our holiness. Our preparedness. Now Isaiah 59 says, Rather 
your iniquities have been barriers between you and your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. You know, if you are in a state of sin, then the Lord's face will be hidden and our prayers will not be heard. Now, Proverbs 15, 8. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. So an upright person, when he prays, when she prays, when they intercede, it becomes a delight for the Lord. It becomes an acceptable offering. Psalm 24 verse 3 and 4. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts who do not lift their souls to what is false and who do not swear deceitfully. So what is the role of an intercessor? An intercessor stands in the breach. So an intercessor is someone who stands before God and before and before men. So an intercessor comes in between. So you need to relate well with both. Psalm 34 verse 15 to 17 and also 1 Peter 3 12. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Again we see in Exodus chapter 33 verse 17. The Lord said to Moses. I will do everything you have asked. For you have found favor in my sight. And I know you by name. That is very important. That we find favor in the eyes of the Lord. And that really matters in our ministry of intercession. So those without holiness would find intercession very unbearable. They cannot. They cannot intercede effectively and their intercession would not be acceptable. That's why Saint Pope John Paul II said, Holiness is the womb of mission. Mission is born there. It becomes the womb where mission is born. So many of us tend to think, you know, it's okay that with all our planning, with all our hard work, with all our resources, we can do mission. No. The most important factor in mission is our own holiness. Now, Elijah turned out to be a powerful intercessor, as we see in 1 Kings chapter 17 and 18. And also, James very clearly says in 5, chapter 5, 16 to 18, he says, the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us and he prayed fervently that it might not rain and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth yielded its harvest. Hallelujah. See a righteous man when he prays what is impact? It can stop rain, bring down fire, bring down rain. All this is possible. Now, in the book of Joshua, chapter 3, verse 5, sanctify yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will perform wonders among you. So, when we sanctify ourselves, the Lord will start working wonders. Now, I'm not going into detail, but I just want to mention 
you know the life of some of the saints and how holiness impacted their intercession and their mission very important to note now saint vincent ferro now is a fourth century saint a hermit now it is re reported about him that he raised 31 people from death 31 people including his own servant whose son was cut into pieces by his wife and they say even a part of that was being cooked when his own assistant went home and the saint Vincent Ferrer brought that boy back to life now look at Saint John Mary Vian he saved thousands of souls one incident he said about him that Satan was trying to kill him one, one night and when John Mary Vian woke up from sleep he asked him what are you doing and Satan said you have snatched away 80,000 people from my clutches so with a life of holiness these saved souls our intercession becomes powerful it is said about Saint Martin the Bishop of Tours very disappointed with all that was happening around all the scandals immorality he prays to God oh Lord what would it take to spare my country France then the Lord said, Martin, it will take one saint. Hallelujah. Isn't it that hopeful? You know, that one saint can make the difference. Again, about Saint Grigory, the miracle worker who became the bishop. It is said, when he began his ministry, there were 17 Christians in Caesarea. And as he was dying there were only 17 pagans in the whole town the rest were converted so the mission all depends on our life of holiness now i just want you to go through a five layer sanctification process now you may start thinking we are here to hear on intercession why is this why am i giving you a talk on repentance this is very important for an intercessor i always like to begin my sessions on intercession with a time of repentance because only then we can become effective intercessors so what i want you to do dear friends is i give this talk you know maybe you have about 50 minutes uh, sorry about 90 minute session 80 to 90 minute session after that please go through your notes go through this talk and go into a time of sanctification you know sanctifying each of your senses the Lord enables us to use our natural senses such as sight hearing smell taste touch in prophetic intercession these are very very important so cleansing the natural senses will help us to open our spiritual senses and grow and understand what the spirit is saying to us that's why it's very very important these five layers of sanctification so the first is an intercessor's heart intercessor's heart is very important Later, I will be telling you that intercession is a ministry of love. Ministry of love for God's kingdom. Ministry of love for the people. So I just want to, you to refer to the book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 2 to 5. It says, I know your works, your labor and your endurance and that you cannot tolerate the wicked that you have tested those who call themselves apostles but are not and discovered that they are impostors moreover you have endurance and have suffered for my name and you have not grown weary yet i hold this against you 
you have lost the love you had at first otherwise no sorry um, realize how far you have fallen repent and do the works you did at first otherwise i will come to you and remove your love stand from its place unless you repent now this part of the word says writing to the church of ephesus saint john inspired by the holy spirit is telling them you know i appreciate all that you do there is such a lot of good work that you are doing but i have one thing to tell you that you have lost your first love that's very important for the lord if you are serving the lord if you are working for the lord it's because of our love for the lord so if you lose that love that seal that craziness that we experienced in the beginning then we have lost the first love and the lord is looking at our heart so the heart of an intercessor is very important because it is the heart of the intercessor that gets united with jesus who is the intercessor so it's a heart to heart communication that happens so our heart should be burning with love for the lord and we should not lose that first love now revelation chapter 3 15 16 says i know your works you are neither cold nor hot i wish you were either cold or hot so because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot i am about to spit you out of my mouth even pope francis says the greatest threat to the church today is not from outside but from within our lukewarmness so let us as intercessors not be lukewarm people let us as intercessors be people burning in our hearts with love for the lord and love for the people so the heart of an intercessor is something very very important as saint paul told the galatians in chapter 3 have in begun in the spirit let us not be people ending in the flesh no sin is too small for an intercessor so let us be people who are on fire somebody jokingly said many are cold but few are frozen <laughs> which which category do you and i belong are we people who are on fire are we people who are lukewarm are we people who are cold or are we people who are frozen so we need to really be on fire for the lord i just want to conclude this part with the example of a saint saint ignatius of antioch beautiful it's a long passage to read i just want to give you the gist of it you know he was facing persecution they asked him deny the lord but he refused then he was being led to rome for for being being martyred and on the way on the way he was always praising the lord he was making beautiful prayers to the lord and then uh, you know when when he reached circo massimo in rome he was thrown to the beast he was devoured by the beast and after he was killed his disciples went to pick up the remaining parts of his body and they say his heart was still intact and on his heart it was written in gold letters jesus in gold letters so in our hearts too we need to be written in gold letters jesus so we need to love the lord to be good and powerful intercessors so let us ask ourselves how much do i love the lord is my heart burning with love for the lord and for the people another important sense in our body that we need to purify and sanctify is the intercessors eyes 
1 John 2.16 For all that is in the world, the desire of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, the pride in riches comes not from the Father but from the world. So the desire of the eyes is very very important to sanctify. You know it involves two capital sins, the lust and the pride. So the sensual lust which entices the eyes. So we may have you know secret and hidden sins, you know sudden weaknesses because of which our eyes would be a victim, would be under sin, would be under bondage. So we need to cleanse our eyes. Now Hebrews chapter 12, 14 says, Pursue peace with everyone and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Seeing the Lord is very important. Seeing what the Lord wants us to show is very important in prophetic intercession. You know, the eyes are so important, so vital a sense in our body. Now, just look at the life of David. 2 Samuel chapter 11, we see something very important. Where all the kings go out for battle in that season, David stays back and then the word of God says David sent his subordinates and then he went for siesta. After siesta he gets up, he goes to the rooftop of his palace and on rooftop he is roaming around and then suddenly he sees a woman bathing and she was beautiful. And the word of God says, you know, such an anointed man, a man of God, a man after God's own heart, a king falls into sin, not one, but more than one, because he did not control his eyes. It's so very important for us to cleanse our eyes. Now there is something beautiful that Father Rainier Kandal Mesa says. He says, I was giving a talk to the seminarians uh, and I was speaking about control of the eyes. And then one seminarian got up and asked this question, Father, the Lord has won us the eyes for what? To, for us to see the beautiful things that God has created. So what is wrong if you if you see things that God has created? Then Father Rainiera Kandalmesa told him, Brother, yes, the Lord has given you the eyes, but the Lord also has given you the eyelids. We can close our eyes when we should not do something. Let's look at something. So that is very, very important in the life of an intercessor. Matthew chapter 6, 22-23 says, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eyes is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? So the, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if the lamp of the body itself is in darkness, the whole body will be in darkness. Such a vital organ in our body that needs to be cleansed. Now in 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 17, Elisha prayed for the eyes of his servant to be opened. He saw what was happening in the spiritual realm. And then he sees horses and chariots of fire surrounding them. That was not the natural sense, but he was seeing through the spiritual eyes what the Lord was doing. And that is what Elisha prayed for his servant. So we need to be prayed over. We need to pray for ourselves that we are able to see what the Lord is doing around us. 
for us as intercessors. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 11, the Lord asked Jeremiah, What do you see? He was asking what he saw. Not with the natural eyes, but with the spiritual eyes. So what do we see? And we need to see what the Lord wants us to see. The vision, the insight that the Lord is going to give us. Now, the third sense that we need to cleanse and sanctify is an intercessor's ears. Our ears, hearing is very important to discern God's will, to understand God's plans. John 10, 27 says, My sheep listen to my voice. So in both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, hearing God's word, His voice is very, very important. <coughs> Many a time, our ears are turned to those who speak evil, gossip, slander, vulgar things, etc. But we need to tune our ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to us, especially as we grow progress in our ministry of intercession. Isaiah 55 3 Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. So incline your ear and come so that you may really be able to hear, you may be able to see what the Lord wants us to see. Now Leviticus chapter 8 verse 23. Moses slaughtered the ram. Then he put some blood on the right ear of Aaron, on the right ear of Aaron. Why? Because Moses was consecrating Aaron and his sons for their duties in the tabernacle. Now they were already anointed with oil, but he was consecrating the ear so that he would listen to the instructions that the Lord is going to give. And we need to sanctify our ears with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, we see Samuel's calling as a prophet. When the Lord called him, did he recognize the voice of the Lord? No. Once, twice. He did not. So, then, finally, he knew it was the Lord who was calling him. And he responded, Samuel, Samuel, when the Lord called, he said, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. That should be the attitude of every intercessor, that we are willing to listen. Only then the Lord will speak and we will understand. 1 Samuel 3.20 says, A trustworthy prophet of the Lord. Samuel became a trustworthy prophet of the Lord because he started listening to what the Lord was telling him. Now the fourth area that needs sanctification is an intercessor's mind. Again, I want to refer to that 1 John 2 16. It says, For all that is in the world, the desire of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, and pride in riches comes not from the Father but from the world. So the second part of it is the pride. You know, the pride versus humility, the opposite mm -hmm. is humility. For an intercessor, to be humble is very important. A serious impediment for an intercessor to stand in the breach is pride. So if I am proud, then I cannot be an effective intercessor. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, 13 and 14 says, When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among the people, if my people who are called by my name 
humble themselves. Pray, seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. So this all begins with humility. When we humble ourselves, an intercessor has to be humble. About Saint Macarius, it is said that he was a very humble man. You know, Egypt. He was in Egypt in the fourth century, and it seems the Satan had a battle with him, a physical fight. And in that physical fight, Satan could not overpower him. And Satan said, "There is something in you because of which I cannot do this." And then Macarius asked him, "What is it?" And he said, "Your humility, because you are humble." So humility is something that is very, very important for an intercessor. The fifth, the intercessor's tongue or mouth behind every sin, there is a lie. Father of lies was behind the sin of our first parents. Beware of falsehood, lies, slander, boastfulness, abusive language. Let me tell you, even in the charismatic renewal, I have seen people who think it is okay telling lies, it is okay doing slandering. It is okay being boastful using abusive language. It is not so. Your tongue is very, very important organ in your body. That needs to be controlled. I say, if an anointed person tells one lie, then he or she loses 10% of the anointing. Very often we take it for granted, you know, telling lies. We don't even consider that as a sin. Why this principle of lie detector test goes? You know, when there's a crime, the, the accused is sometimes subjected to lie detector test. Why? Because when you tell a lie, it causes a disorder within you because of which when you are not conscious it can be detected within you so that is how the lie detector test works so when you say a lie there is a disorder that happens within us physically mentally and what about spiritually then sirah 28 13 14 curse the gossips and the double tongues for they destroy the peace of many. Slander has shaken many and scattered them from nation to nation. It has destroyed strong cities, overturned the houses of great. So just imagine the word of God is teaching all this. The gossips, the double tongues, the double tongue is what? It's also lie. So we need to be very careful in our use of tongues. It is said that St. Augustine used to write and keep outside his room. Here we do not speak evil of anyone. Beautiful principle that we should follow. Controlling our tongue. Colossians chapter 3 verse 8, 9 says, But now you must get rid of all such things. Now what are those things? anger, wrath, malice, slander and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another. Hallelujah. James chapter 3 verse 5 and 6. So also the tongue is a small member yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire. So, 
and the tongue is a fire the word of god is telling us the tongue is a fire the tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity it stains the whole body sets on fire the cycle of nature and is itself set on fire by hell just to see so it stains the whole body when we tell one lie matthew chapter 12 36 37 i tell you on the day of judgment you will have to give an account of every careless word you utter <laughs> now what do you think of this uh, i i just visualize you know saint peter in his book of life he must be taking a note of every useless word that we utter every lie that we say every slander every every kind of abusive language that we use so every word we utter for an anointed person matters so much so let us be very very careful in our use of our tongue we need to control our tongue so now we have seen a five layer purification process we need to cleanse ourselves we need to sanctify ourselves in these five areas so my teaching is over now i want you to just spend little time repenting now this is as part of the talk as i said i want each one of you to spend some time reflect on each one of these five senses and cleanse each of those senses because as i continue my teaching on prophetic intercession you will realize how important are these senses for you because it is through these senses that the lord is going to reveal to us many things and the more you sanctify these senses the more you will be able to become a prophetic in the sense so spend some time take each one of this and sanctify it jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13 says for my people have committed two evils they have forsaken me the fountain of living water and dug out cisterns for themselves crack the cisterns that can hold no water now are we people holding the crack the cisterns we need to plug those cracks those holes in the cisterns we need to fill those cracks so that they will hold water they will bear fruit jeremiah chapter 2 verse 21 yet i planted you as a choice vine from the purest stock how then did you turn degenerate and become a wild vine no we are the choices to wine that the lord has planted each one of us choices the best that's why the lord has called us to be part of this jericho 2020 so let us see where the degeneration has taken place and we became the wild vine we need to go back proverbs 28 13 no one who conceals transgressions will prosper but one who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy so we need to obtain mercy by confessing our sins i do not know if you have the facility for confession you should definitely avail it otherwise repent for these sins and join with david david in psalm 51 repenting for his sins he cries out to the lord and says in 10 11 maybe you know the verses can change in some translations a clean heart create for me o god and a steadfast spirit renew within me and your holy spirit take not from me close your eyes for a minute
repent. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this beautiful time to reflect on ourselves, on our senses. Lord, we want to sanctify our senses in our body. Lord, we want to grow in holiness. We realize that you have called us to be intercessors, to draw closer to you. Lord, give us the grace to realize what we are, where we have fallen. Lord, send your spirit upon us. Give us the grace to repent. Give us the grace to come back to you come back to the first love that we may born for you and your kingdom and for your people we make this prayer in the powerful name of Jesus through the intercession of our blessed mother Mary hail Mary full of grace the Lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your own Jesus holy Mary mother of God pray for the sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I was a participant in the fifth batch of Jericho 2020. The person who first listened to those teachings was not the same person who came out of the workshop after 15 days. I changed a lot. I think it had a lot to do with the fact that this type of prayer involves being receptive to the Holy Spirit. When you are being that receptive to the Holy Spirit, you, you are being revealed to the walls you have built around your heart that is keeping you away from God, that is keeping you away from people, that makes you closed off to the Spirit. and. Um, that's what happened to me i realized these blocks to be sensitivity sensitivity is something i regard as positive but the same sensitivity towards what others might think of me that made me grow hostile towards other people it also affected my prayer life where i, I refused to open my mouth and pray which all changed after the workshop which was only one block and there were so many blocks cleared uh, during the workshop like overthinking I used to always be prepared before I pray but during the workshops you are asked to pray at that moment and you need to be ready you need to be receptive to the Holy Spirit and just speak what the Spirit guides you to speak so it was something out of your control and it was very new to me I uh, realized a sense of freedom after this uh, workshops. I also realized to keep aside my logical reasoning uh, which was again a fact that kept me from listening to religious teachings. I always um, took those religious teachings through the gate of reason, through the gate of logic and I dismissed a lot of things and after this workshop I realized how these things that I didn't realize in my own intellect that I would have thought as positive the Holy Spirit revealed to me that it's, it's actually keeping me away from God and after these workshops I began to be awake at all times to what uh, the Holy Spirit is guiding me to do I was always awake of what is being told of what I should accept of what I should reject from what I'm getting from this world and um, how should I act? All these developed with the spiritual relationship that began from these workshops. From being other-centered, I also found myself 